So in this video, I want to pick up from a point I was making at the end of the discussion of the course content, uh, which is that this is a quantitative class and that can be challenging and, or, or frustrating or scary for a lot of students because a lot of students, uh, you know, in environmental sciences and environmental policy, uh, you know, and more broadly across, you know, the sciences and beyond, uh, we, we live in a society where, you know, math and math education and quantitative education can be stressful for a lot of people, can be challenging for a lot of people. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people at some point along the way have often in, encountered a teacher that made them feel like, uh, you know, convinced them inadvertently that they weren't good at math. Uh, there's so, so many people walking around today that, that think they're not good at math. Uh, and I think often it's not that, uh, you know, we don't, that, that you're fundamentally can't figure it out. It's that the way that we teach math often in, in quantity of topics often results in people getting frustrated and kind of dropping out rather than uh, pushing through to, to kind of get to the next level. Um, so a couple of things I want to talk about. First, there, there is this perception that among some folks that you don't need math in environmental sciences, environmental policy. Uh, and I, I just want to be completely clear that, that numbers are critical in the work we do. You know, environmental policy is always a matter of degree. You know, we do not work in a, in a discipline that is one dominated by black and white. We're, there's a lot of gray and, you know, whether, you know, for example, whether a pollutant is uh, safe or toxic is not a threshold. It's, it's a gradient and, you know, you to, to regulate that, to manage that, that to uh, you know, address those problems, you know, is one of knowing, you know, you know how much of something is out there. You know, when we manage populations, you know, the difference between a, a thriving population and a threatened population and extinction, extinct, you know, near extinct population is a matter of, of degree. So knowing, being able to quantify uh, environmental impacts, being able to quantify uh, environmental quality and, and uh, assessing these things is, uh, is definitively, a, you know, a quantitative endeavor. And that's really, a, you know, something that's, I think, emphasized in both our environmental science, environmental policy majors is, is that there is a deep quantitative uh, component to the work we do. Um, and those, like I kind of alluded to earlier, the, you know, this, these matters of degree are, are important. There's often a lot of trade-offs that we need to, to quantify between, you know, environmental pro processes and economic processes, for example. Um, and I also want to emphasize that when you come out of this class, even if you never have to, you know, run a statistical analysis again or implement a symbol model again, uh, all of us need to be able to understand and evaluate data. We need to understand and evaluate models that other people have generated, statistics that other people have generated, predictions and projections that other people have generated. So. I want to just emphasize that even if you don't think you're ever going to implement these things after this class, I will say that I, I strongly suspect you will encounter uh, things implemented by others and you need a, a, a firm grounding in these concepts to be able to interpret what others have done and be able to use what others have done correctly. Um, next, this idea that among many of us that, you know, you may have been convinced that you've, you're bad at math. Uh, I would say if, if you are, feel you're in that boat, um, I want to really say that, you know, a key thing in this class is to focus on the concepts and focus on the problem solving. Um, we're going to have very limited kind of derivation style math in this class, you know, very little uh, that's needed beyond just basic algebra. We'll, we'll rely once in a while on some of the concepts of calculus, but not really the the nuts and bolts of of derivations or or proofs or a lot of the you know methods the numerical me the the analytical methods in calculus and stuff like that are not ones we're going to rely on a lot we're going to rely more on on using numerical methods to approximate uh, a lot of those uh, more challenging uh, mathematical uh, concepts and techniques um, and 
as I said, you know, at the end of the last lecture, you know, just the importance of asking questions. So if you, there's something in, in a video you don't understand, you know, make sure to come to discussion, you know, prime to, to uh, ask questions about that, to, to ask follow up and to really, uh, you know, if, if something doesn't make sense to you, um, follow up with, with Betsy and I. Um, yeah, that's it, so important. Uh, I also wanted to kind of uh, speak to a couple other things related to uh, math anxiety and quantitative anxiety. And, and note that there is, is definitively uh, a gender divide in this in society. And that uh, while we've seen a lot of progress over the last decades in uh, movement in, across many fields towards greater equity, uh, computer science for some unknown or uh, yeah, I guess some, we know some of the reasons, but for unfortunate reasons, computer science is actually a field that has backslid a good bit and in, in many parts of it have become uh, less diverse and um, sometimes uh, can, be, can feel fairly hostile uh, uh, to, to uh, folks who are not part of the majority uh, either in terms of gender or race. Um, I, I, in terms of gender in particular, I, I think this is kind of some, somewhat ironic considering many of the core concepts of computer science and computer programming actually were uh, first created by, by women. So the first computer program ever written was written by uh, Ada Lovelace before there was even a, an electronic computer uh, to do it on. You know, the, the first general purpose digital computers were programmed by women. You know, the first compiler was written by women. You know, the, the, all the, the uh, you know, key things like uh, Margaret Hamilton's work on, on, you know, the Apollo mission, all the software uh, that got that mission to the moon and back, you know, all this was done by women. And so you've, they've played such a foundational role of this discipline. It's kind of unfortunate and bizarre uh, that it's become uh, more male dominated over the last few decades uh, because there's absolutely, absolutely nothing in this field that is in any way, uh, you know, uh, specific to, to any specific gender or race. Uh, the other thing I really want to emphasize about coding is that coding is not a matter of brilliance. It's not, uh, about strokes of insight. It is a skill set, and it's a skill set that is refined by practice. Um, and the best way to get better at programming is just to spend more time uh, programming. And just, you know, every lab in this course is meant to start at some simple concepts and, and to incrementally increase your skill set to give you more hands on time practicing things. And you know, you're gonna start off in the beginning of the semester, all this is gonna feel very foreign, uh, but as you do more and more of it, it'll become much more routine. And it's just that regular practice, regular exposure. And also to remember that, you know, there you know, not only is, is this, uh, is practice essential, uh, but you, um, you know, it's, it, there, there are many ways to solve almost any problem that we're gonna give in this course. So there's so many different ways to implement the same concepts. Uh, there's, no, there's not necessarily one you know, right answer for how to do something. There's, there's many ways to solve problems, many ways to implement different approaches. And uh, so you know, much like learning to play an instrument, you, know, you get better by doing it. Um, Though I would say in, in computer programming, uh, you get better by doing it and you Google a lot. So Google will definitely become your friend in programming. And I also want to emphasize, uh, really important emphasize, Googling uh, message, error messages or code or functions and things like that is not cheating when it comes to programming. That That is how all of us do it. You know, you're not supposed to just like, you read a description of, of a function once and suddenly magically know how to use it, uh, you know, brilliantly thereafter. I mean, it's totally fine to look up 
uh, you know, if, a, if R gives you an error message to Google that error message, if, if you don't understand what something's doing to look up examples uh, to, to, you know, just use Google as a resource uh, to find, uh, find answers to the questions that you, that you have in addition to uh, you know, asking me in the TF. Um, I also want to kind of emphasize, kind of finish this lecture on uh, just the practical value of, of learning some of these quantitative tools for uh, data analysis uh, and, and statistics and, and modeling. Um, just to say that these, there's a, a large shortfall of uh, people trained in these quantitative methods. This is a major area of, of growth in the economy. Uh, I'm not expecting that this course will suddenly turn you into a computer science major and you're going to go out and get a job for Google you know, next year, but I will say that they are likely to be a, an asset. Uh, one of my you know, real experiences I've had with many students in 375 is that this is definitively a challenging course when you're in it. A lot of students find this one of the hardest courses in their, their major, but then they will write me afterwards when they go out and and get a job and say, this is the stuff that I actually use day to day. This is the stuff uh, that helped me get a job. This is the stuff that, um, you know, I, I found rewarding and challenging, even though, you know, afterwards. So I think to kind of sum up, 375 is a course you enjoy much more after you've completed it uh, than when you are in it. Uh, and hopefully you will gain a lot of practical, useful information from it, uh, while, while also absorbing a lot of I think some really interesting concepts about how to think about uh, models and data and, and the data that surround us. Um, and so the last bit here is there's a link here that we'll, I'll, I'll post as a separate video, kind of a, a short video uh, from code.org kind of uh, talking about the role of coding in, in education in the, the modern economy. Thank you. <laughs>